Welcome in to game 11 of the 2024 Banana Ball World Tour. Loved by our friends who ride majestic, translucent steeds, Zappos. The Nanners are red hot, winners of five straight, and tonight they look to remain undefeated all time in Jacksonville, Florida. It will be mic'd up mania on the mound. Our card opens with both starting pitchers, Jared Donaldson and Garrett Delano dueling it out on the microphone. Our co-main event will have our resident rodeo clown, Matt Wolf and Ryan Sexy Mexi Rodriguez with hot mics competing to see who is the most entertaining pitcher in banana ball. And we'll finish with a bang as both teams' closers will have mics on them when the game matters most. Happy Saturday, and thank you so much for spending your evening with us here in virtual Banana Land. The fourth ever Banana Ball game from 1 to 1 Financial Ballpark. Moments away, welcome inside along Josh Tolevsky, I am Biko Scala. It's going to be a heck of an event this evening on the heels of five straight Bananas victories. And look, the Bananas have never lost a game here in 1 to 1 Financial Ballpark. They are now 3 and 0 playing here in Jacksonville. It's a city that they have started to enjoy, and we saw a lot of encouraging signs from the Bananas last night. They had 13 of the 15 total trick plays in the ball game and we saw three home runs between the bananas and party animals as well eric jones jr collecting his first they did everything right in banana ball and it resulted in the game that was also below two hours all right let's roll the tape take a look at the video evidence of what mr talevsky just told you we kick it off in the bottom of the first inning dr meadows base knock up the middle gabe howell says well that looked pretty fun i'd like one of those he has it. DR slapping that thigh on second base, and Dan Oberst slapping that ball one hop against the center field wall, 120 feet away. Check that, 420 feet away. That's way more impressive. Nader's get the first point. What was also impressive, this catch from Rack in left field, though it would lead to a sack fight for the party animals. They're clicking to a run-run lead, and Chase Acuff and Dustin Baber Double up Danny Hosley at second base. Sean Fluke was barking all at that guy. Top of the third now, Ryan Kellogg with the first trick play in his illustrious banana ball career. This one out to DR Meadows. He grabs his fifth of the tour with the backflip catch. And why not make it three with two men aboard and two outs? Jackson Olsen bounces it to EJ. Three outs, all of them via the trick play. And what's really impressive about those trick plays, you got one from your pitcher, one from your outfielder, and one from an infielder, but the trick play madness didn't stop there. Ryan Cox goes over the shoulder, and EJ, for the first time, we saw a first baseman receive the ball behind the back for a trick play. Thrilling stuff there. Now top of the fifth. Payoff pitch from Cowboy Kyle. Another trick play. No, he's going to fake you out. All smiles, though, from the Richmond Hill, Georgia kid. Another look at it. Got you at the fake hike. Now 0-2 to Jason Swan. Here it is. After all that, and EJ says, I'll go behind the back again. Give Cowboy Kyle a football contract. Perfect long snap to EJ. And once again, going behind the back as, as Ryan Cox and Rat kind of tumbling over in foul territory get the final out of the inning. And a 1-2-3 frame means... It's time to celebrate with a little dirty dancing. You guys do deserve a bow. And the folks in the broadcast booth getting into it as well. Yeah, we were waving with Kyle and Bill. I'll tell you what, EJ waved this ball goodbye. Out of 1-2-1 one, one financial, a walk-off two-run shot from EJ, and he gets in the home run department for the first time in 2024. He gets to channel his inner greatest showman. Now top of the sixth, Jake Skoll says, I will send it out to left as well. He has three home runs in three career games here in Jacksonville. It's Jacksonville from what I heard, but Noah Bridges came up, barreled this ball to first base, and Jason Swan, no shirt on, no problem, lays out and makes a phenomenal diving catch. Heck of a play. Cowboy Kyle with two outs, hands the ball off to Stiltz, who gives up a sprint and then gets this bouncer to Cox, third trick play of the night. For the glove magician, Dakota Albritton gets the job done. Bottom half of the inning, game tied at two points apiece. Pinch hitter Reese Alexiades has too much speed for Acuff to finish this play. Nanners out in front, 3-2. Yeah, but the Bananas wouldn't stop there. Brandon Crosby in the eighth inning would draw the ball for sprint, and the Bananas would get a critical insurance point going into the final inning against the party animals. With the mic on him, Danny Hosley on the bump. Chase Acuff at the dish. Look out! 
Oh my gosh, where'd this power come from? His second home run in the last three games. Acuff, unbelievable stuff there. But we saw with Danny Hosley mic'd up, he stayed calm and collected on the mound with the one-two count. Reese Hampton snared by Eric Jones Jr. at first base and a trick play flourish at the very end to seal the Bananas' fifth consecutive victory. Reginald Horton and company absolutely love that. And the Showman of the Night award will go to a guy born in Jacksonville, Florida. EJ has that home run you saw. You saw all three of his trick plays as well. Josh and I were lucky to get to chat with Jones Jr. before the ball game. Here's what he had to say about his performance. Catching up with the showman of the night from last night, Eric Jones Jr. This is a part of his pregame workout every day before a ball game. EJ, tour leader last year in Ding Dongs. You had your first home run last night of this tour. How good did it feel? Oh, it felt great. Just out here trying to put a show on for the fans, trying to play some good ball, having fun with it, feeling strong. Yeah, no doubt. Looking strong as well. You can pass those on to your assistant. Josh. <laughs> Look out, Josh. Look out. Those are some big weights there for you. Uh, EJ, five-game winning streak for the boys. You were a part of the 12-game losing streak dating back to last year. How good does it feel for the guys to be red hot now? Yeah, you know, it's one of those things where sometimes you get them, sometimes they get you, but the bananas are dialed in right now. We're focused. We're locked in. We're tapped in. And we're here to play ball. We're here to put on a show. We're going to do some trick plays. We're going to hit some bombs. And that's, that's just how it's going to go, Vico. Okay, sweet. I think we can pass this on to your assistant one more time here. Uh, attaboy, Josh. Absolutely dominating this. Mr. Tolevsky, what do you have for EJ? EJ, great to get this pump in with you, man. Um, you know, three trick plays last night, the hat trick. And for the first time ever, you go behind the back to catch a double trick play. Tell me about the practice that goes into pulling that trick off. Yeah, it was uh, a long time coming. Been working on that one. Really got to shout out my shortstop, Ryan Cox, with an amazing trick play and an amazing feed. It's all about the, the ball that comes in. Uh, we've been working on that one in practice. Everybody's been hyped, ready to see it, and uh, just happy to pull it off and put a show on for the people. Well, we're sorry for interrupting your workout. Thank you for spending some time with us. Eric Jones Jr., the showman of the night. Somebody come in here and save Josh as EJ moves on to the last piece of his exercises here. Impressive weightlifting skill on display there for Mr. Tolevsky, as has been the case for these six banana ballers. Yeah, we've seen five home runs in the last three banana ball games, so it feels like the batters are really starting to find their swings on this world tour. And I'll tell you, there's no guy who's surprising people more than Chase Acuff right now for the party animals. He's got the swing going. He has really made significant strides in the extra base hit department, and it showed up in the home runs. Now, we've talked about it already on the pregame, but we want to give you some video of two of the most exciting banana ball pitchers in our young sport. Of course, Matt Wolf on his third tour now, our resident rodeo clown, as good as they get, but he's got competition these days. But the thing is, both of these guys are pitching incredibly well for their respective teams. Matt Wolf across multiple appearances, still yet to give up an earned run for the bananas. He just continues to generate these outs. Meanwhile, the sexy Mexi Ryan Rodriguez had one of the most electric debuts, snaring the liner from Jackson Olsen, also collected a strike out it is going to be so fun to see what these guys bring out to the pitchers mound in this ball game tonight we expect them both to pitch in the seventh with microphones on them talking to us on the broadcast before that though the starting pitchers also getting mic'd up this evening will be jared donaldson for the bananas and the hometown kid out of callahan florida garrett delano for the animals yeah donaldson didn't have a start in savannah last weekend but he's ecstatic to get back in that role he's very used to pitching as a starter and all he's got to do is limit the ball for sprints tonight to be successful Garrett Delano, on the other hand, has been one of the best pitchers, if not the best, on the tour so far. 54 batters face for Delano, and he is only allowed six total hits. And it's impressive. He is working very quickly on the mound. He has made quite the improvement compared to 2023. So far, Delano averaging just three minutes and 28 seconds per inning. Jared Donaldson, if he can cut down on the ball four sprints once again, you're going to see that average minutes per inning mark drop for him as well. And a couple of former collegiates of Anna Bananas facing off. Jared Donaldson, a 2022 CPL champ. Garrett Delano, a 2018 summer collegiate banana. Okay, we are mere moments from first pitch. 
about seven of them to be exact. Before that, here are the 11 rules of Banana Ball, so you are ready to rumble for tonight's game. The name of the game is Banana Ball, and this is the fastest, most entertaining game in sports. Rule number one, win the inning, win the point. In Banana Ball, points are the most important. If you score the most runs in an inning, you get a point. The most points win the game. But in the last inning of Banana Ball, every run counts as a point. Rule number two, there is a two hour time limit. No new inning can start when the clock hits zero. Rule number three, no stepping out. If you step out of the batter's box, it is a strike. Rule number four, no bunting, because bunting sucks. If you bunt, you're thrown out of the game. Rule number five, batters can steal first. On any pass ball, wild pitch, or any pitch, a batter can take off and try to get first. Rule number six, no walks allowed. Walks are boring. So in banana ball, it becomes a ball for sprint. And the batter will take off and advance to as many bases as he wants until every position player touches the ball. Rule number seven, no mound visits. Nope, stay in the dugout or stay in your position. Let's play ball. Rule number eight, if a fan catches a foul ball, it is an out. You got that right. In banana ball, everything's in play, so you better be ready. Rule number nine, the showdown tiebreaker. If the game is tied at the end of nine innings or when time expires, we don't just play extra innings in banana ball. It goes down to an ultimate duel, which we call the showdown. It is pitcher versus hitter with one fielder, and the hitter has to score. If both teams tie the first showdown, then it goes down to just pitcher versus hitter with no fielder. And finally, if we're still tied after two showdowns, the third showdown is pitcher versus hitter, one fielder, and base is loaded, and all the runs count as a point. Rule number 10, the banana ball challenge rule. Not only does each team have the opportunity to challenge a ruling on the field, but for the first time in sports history, you, the fans, have the opportunity to challenge a ruling on the field. Rule number 11, the golden batter rule. Now for the first time ever, a team can send up any batter to hit in any spot in the lineup. This is guaranteeing the best possible matchup, the best pitcher versus the best hitter at the end of the game when it matters most. These are the official rules of Banana Ball. Ladies and gentlemen, Elise Cody. You are watching game 11 of the 2024 Banana Ball World Tour. Loved by our friends who shoot flaming arrows across the bridge of Hemdale Zappos. The Nanners are scorching. Winners of five in a row. Going back two weekends to Peoria, Arizona. Taking all three at home in Savannah, Georgia. And a victory last night here in Duval. Let's get a gander at their defensive alignment as they try to make it six wins in a row. From left to right in the outfield, Robert Anthony Cruz, D.R. Meadows, and Reese Alexiades. In the infield, third to first, you see Gabe Howell, Ryan Cox, Danny Hosley, and Eric Jones Jr. Behind the plate, it is Bill Leroy, and on the bump, it is Jared Donaldson. Once again, the Bananas boosted their total team trick plays with 13 of them last night, and they were led by Ryan Cox, the glove magician, who added to his tally four trick plays last night, now up to 23, and EJ with a hat trick of his own. I'm excited to see Danny Hosley getting his first start at second base this season. Half of his total trick plays came at second base last season for the Nanners. It is Donnie Day in Banana Land. Let's zoom in on the pride of Albany, Georgia. Five-year man out of Georgia Southwestern State University where he finished up as a Division II All-American and then won a Pettit Cup with the Bananas in the summer of 2022. This is his second tour in Banana Ball. And Jared Donaldson's last appearance for the Bananas came in relief, but it was one of those situations where he just seemed to be overthrowing for the Bananas more than anything else. Surrendered four ball four sprints for the Bananas. If his control is on tonight and he's got a good feel for his splitter, he's going to be wildly effective out there on the mound. And he's also tied for the fifth 
fifth fastest minutes per inning mark on the tour so far. He threw an inning in one minute and 38 seconds. He'd like a few more of those under two tonight. That means he will be cruising against a powerful Party Animals lineup. It is always Brees Hampton at the top of the order. You see him right there. Noah Fisher for the second straight game hits second. Jake Skoll hits third in right field. Dalton Cornett cleaning it up as the DH. Bryson Bloomer, the EH behind him. Then Tanner Thomas, Chase Acuff, Bronson Balhome back in the lineup. Dustin Baber and Jason Swan rounds it out. And this team batted above 300 in the first innings last season. Just 231 in the first inning to start the tour this season. We'll see if they can turn that around and jump on Jared Donaldson early. Reese Lightning, the switch hitting center fielder. Ready to rumble, Bill Leroy. All right, Jackson. About to Bill. toss it down to, to second. Here's game. the young professor. Then on the count of three, I need you to yell, start the clock. One, two, three. Showtime. Showtime indeed, Mr. Grafer. The two hour timer starts ticking, and our 11th banana ball game of 2024 is underway. Reese Hampton, a man out of Charlotte, North Carolina. One of the greatest athletes to ever bless us with his presence in our young sport. He's in his third tour, second with the Animals after he was a banana in 2022. Very patient at the top of the lineup, hitting 283, a 365 on base percentage. But he does like to strike if you give him a heater just like that. And you talked about the athleticism of Reese Hampton there. Last night, we saw it on full display. Had two ball four sprints and was showing off the speed a little bit, but had two trick plays for the party animals in center field, going behind the back for one of them and catching another behind the back on the run. It was phenomenal. Last year's tour leader in extra base hits, tied for the tour lead with his five doubles eight RBIs, and he stands alone at the top with his six ball four sprints earned. Perfect man to kick off your lineup. 2-2. Two -two. Fouls it off. We'll do it again. Looked like the patented splitter from Jared Donaldson, when he's on, he'll throw it about 50% of the time. And you've still got a strike to play with here. If I'm Jared Donaldson, I'm going right back to my signature pitch. And he does there, but it's Hampton continuing to battle. This plate appearance already going six pitches. We will see a seven. Donaldson throws his fastball in the low 90s. Adds a splitter and a slider to the heat. As there's a 91 mile an hour fastball low, according to Trackman. And what a battle. Eighth pitch to our first batter of the evening. Cut and a miss. Gas from Donaldson. And he strikes out Reese Hampton. I really like the pitch placement there from Jared Donaldson. Was attacking Hampton inside for the most part there. And on 3-2, it was Bill Leroy setting up away. Donaldson nails the pitch execution there and gets a big first strikeout. And yeah, he's going to dance and celebrate with his infield. Now he sets his sights on the man out of Madison Heights, Michigan. Pass ball will not actually be ruled that in the book because nobody on base. No base is advanced. Fisher thinks about trying to steal first, which he has done once in his young banana ball career. He's a rookie. He was at Northern Kentucky University this past spring, his fifth campaign in Highland Heights, Kentucky. Was the Horizon League player of the year. Absolutely hit the cover off the ball. And he's had a nice start to his young banana ball career too. Yeah, and that's why the party animals have bumped him up into this two spot in the lineup that gives them a little more of a balance in terms of left-handed and right-handed batters as he's able to break up, you know, the Reese Hampton, Jake Skull, and Dalton Cornett left-handed trio there. And look at that, Noah Fisher able to send this one into center field and the party animals have their first hit of the evening. The steal of first, his only swiped bag on the season. You certainly never want to run into an out when you've got a powerful man like Jake Skoll at the dish. Former first round draft pick, Rangers grabbed him 15th overall in 2010. Has three home runs in three career games here in 1-2-1 Financial Ballpark. He's 
the donut hitter tonight, so if he goes down on strikes, nearly 10,000 fans on hand will be gifted free donuts courtesy of Duncan. Look, I commend Shark for this pick. He's clearly done his scouting on Jake Skull, who was struck out in each of his last five World Tour games. Another check on Fisher. Donnie and Leroy both paying close attention to him. He's back safely. And we'll get a 2-2 offering to the Animals right fielder in his fourth World Tour. The banana in 2021 and 22. Now a returning campaign as a party animal. There goes Fisher, cut and a miss, throw down to second. Not in time. What a head first diving slide from Noah Fisher. Probably started it a little bit earlier than he would have liked, but the high throw from Leroy lets him get in there safely. Yeah, it looks like Noah Fisher was going to be a dead duck at second base, but Leroy just throwing this one high. You have the leap there from, it looks like Gabe Howell covering the back due to the skull shift and just couldn't get down in time to apply any tag on Fisher. Now he's in scoring position and a base hit from Dalton Cornett or a possible ball four sprint could bring around Fisher for the animals. DC three in his third world tour, all of them for the boys in black and pink. Cornette hitting 372, destroys that. Oh boy, watch that thing fly into the Jacksonville night. Two run bomb for Cornette and the animals strike early. Again, we have seen long bombs away in the last four games of this 2024 World Tour, and it's Dalton Cornette collecting his first home run, and like his buddy Jake Skull, he had a home run out of this ballpark last season as well. These animals, they are really seeing the ball well here in Jacksonville. Cornette had eight home runs a year ago. Becomes the seventh banana baller in 2024 to leave the yard. And hands the, the baton off to a man who had seven long balls on last year's tour. Grayson Bloomer in the lineup for the fourth straight game. His first four of the tour after he had off season surgery boy did he work hard on his rehab back a couple weeks even maybe even a full month before he was scheduled bloomer in his second tour with the party animals a two-time banana before that one back-to-back -back pettit cups and skies this one shallow left cox and howell debating who will grab it gabe gets the ball that will end the inning. But a bomb from DC3 has the animals with a two spot. Remember in banana ball, you win the inning, you get a point. So the bananas need three runs to win the first inning, two runs to deny the party animals the point available. Here's how the bad boys of Banana Land align defensively. Tanner Thomas in left, Hampton in center, Skull in right. From third to first in the infield, it's Fisher Chase Acuff, Dustin Baber, and Jason Swan. Behind the dish, it is Bronson Bauholm, and on the mound, Garrett Delano. And it was Reese Hampton who stole the show in the trick play department for the party animals last night. Doubled his season total with two trick plays. They were the only two trick plays of the night for the party animals. Dustin Baber, of course, is still leading this team and is seven off of the tour lead behind Ryan Cox. The interesting thing about Baber's lack of trick plays last night, he didn't have a single ball that was put in play that came his way. That's a good recipe for zero trick plays. Let's get a look at the man out of Duval County, Aaron Delano from Callahan, Florida, right down the road. And anytime you have an ERA below two in banana ball, you are doing something right. 
And he threw very well in Jacksonville last year as well. Threw five shutout innings for the party animals and collected five strikeouts. And the fastest minutes per inning mark of Garrett Delano's career came in this ballpark, a one minute and 23 second inning. We'll see how quickly he can get DR Meadows, Gabe Howell, and Dan Oberst due to swing it here in the first. All three of them because of the two run lead for the animals. Remember a home team can walk off any inning in banana ball. But with two runs already in the hole, the Bananas will have to bring three guys up to the, pl up to the plate no matter what occurs. Meadows chops it to Fisher across the diamond. No scoop from Jason Swan. So it will be the fourth error on Fisher's tour. And the Bananas can pounce on a party animal's mistake here in the bottom of the first. Yeah, and it's always tough to get back in at third base after taking a couple days off. It feels like Bryson Bloomer, when he's 100% healthy, will be the everyday third baseman for this Party Animals team. And an unfortunate error and start for Noah Fisher and the Party Animals. Meadows normally a terror on the base pads, but Gabe Howell is the guy who truly matters. He represents the tying run in the first. And he's plunked for the second time on the season. And now the innings tying run aboard. And the all-powerful Dan Oberst represents the winning run. How about Powell going to first? It's the way you brush off a hit by pitch right there. Just belt out. A little let it go from Frozen. And this Jacksonville crowd is singing it right along with Gabe Howell as well. We saw this last night. We're seeing it early once again. Jacksonville, they back the bananas. They booed the party animals after the Cornet home run. And they're cheering right now for the bananas as they're looking to rally with Dan Oberst now stepping into the box. An error, a hit batter, and the door wide open for the bananas. As Dan gassed up by his jiu-jitsu sparring partner, this is Oberst's sixth year as a banana, third as a pro. Gulf South Conference Player of the Year in 2021 in his final campaign at the University of West Georgia. He cuts and misses, but it's going to be a wild pitch and no chance for Bauholm to get Oberst at first. And this is as gritty of a rally as you could ever conjure. After the error and hit batter, you get a steal of first on a strikeout. And this is actually a great call from Vincent Chapman here. Dan Oberst actually out because first base was occupied when he struck out. And in baseball, if first base is occupied and there's less than two outs, when you strike out swinging on a ball in the dirt, the hitter is immediately out. So it will just be a wild pitch that gets Meadows to third and Howell up to second. Good call by Vincent. Yeah, just a professional call from Vincent. Just, just good baseball understanding. Again, we see this guy, he's dancing it up all the time, but he has come through in some really big moments in terms of umpiring decisions. And it's extra confusing, obviously, in banana ball because you can steal first on any pitch. We recommend only trying on pass balls and wild pitches. But in that instance, the strikeout overruled the attempt of a steal. Danny Hosley, deep down the right field line. Oh, it hooks foul. He put a good charge into that. Osley in his second tour with the Bananas. Blasted four balls out of the park last year. And was, according to OPS Plus, the third best hitter the Bananas had behind Eric Jones Jr. and Oberst. And what he was the best at was batting with runners in scoring position last year. It has stayed true early on in this tour, batting 500 through these first 10 games as he checks his swing they appeal over at first base and the first base umpire Bryson Wheeler says Danny Hosley held up it's a great job holding up on the curveball Delano still out in front in the count and cuts and misses Danny Hosley down swinging on high heat that is a huge second out and the fainting goat celebration from Delano as well as his eight teammates in the field and all of his teammates outside the animal's dugout.
Here's the aforementioned Eric Jones Jr. in his third world tour, all with the Bananas. Former Seattle Mariners and Minnesota Twins minor leaguer. He's the Mariners bullpen catcher in their magical summer of 2022. They made it to the divisional round of the American League playoffs. And EJ swinging a hot bat, five walk-offs on the tour, one behind Oberst for the season high. We saw EJ last night after the game. Also, of course, talked to him in the showman highlight that we showed. He has not been able to wipe the smile off of his face since that big game last night. Foul ball. Could it be caught by a fan? It could have, but it was not. Hey, control room, what can we do to try and tell Dustin Stetson that he needs to move about two full feet to his right? Just, just something to think about. The third base umpire soiling our center field cam review once we switch to it here. You'll get a good look at it. Yep, there it is, son of a gun. Get that guy out of the way of our camera. Another foul ball by EJ, and Deuce is wild here with the innings tying run in scoring position. Bouncer grabbed by Acuff, he keeps it in the infield. Big, emphatic stop sign for Howell from his head coach Tyler Gillum because the ball did not Get off the infield dirt. So Acuff saves the inning lead for the Animals for now. Meadows scores, unearned run on Delano as he reached on an error. The party Animals now lead the inning two to one. And the fate of the frame is in the hands of Robert Anthony Cruz, former Washington Nationals minor leaguer. That could be an inning-saving play for Chase Acuff at the end of the day. Great job by Tyler Gillum telling Gabe Howell to pump the brakes. He looked like he was getting ready to just go ahead and gear towards the plate. I don't even know if he realized that Chase Acuff had gotten the ball in glove there. No, that's one tearing from second towards third as the inning tying run. You're just staring at your third base coach. 0-2 count on Cruz. Bananas down to their final strike of the frame. Noah Bridges pinch runs for Jones Jr. at first. And there he goes towards second. Bouncer and coming home. Howell read it perfectly. He scores easily on the wild pitch. And we're all knotted up at two runs apiece here in the first inning. That is a brutal wild pitch for Garrett Delano, his second in the inning, and that's what burned him in his last start against the Bananas in Savannah, Georgia. It was Dan Obers leading off the of third base. Delano had one that got away there, and it led to a Bananas walk-off. Bridges does get the steal. He was off on the pitch. That's his second of the tour. Good pickoff there. Tag from Acuff just a hair late. So now the inning winning run in scoring position. Cruz with one walk off in his young banana ball career. Sends this one a mile high. Acuff has to run a while. Makes the call and the catch. And no point earned for either side. One inning, two runs apiece. And we are still 0-0 in the all important points category. As we head to the second, and here comes an exciting transition. Yeah, our chemistry just keeps building every time that we talk. You know, I know there will be a bunch of tough situations in the game, you know, whether it's three, two count. Chemistry just keeps building every time that we talk. You know, I know there will be a bunch of tough situations in the game, you know, whether it's three, two count, bases loaded. You know, Kyle is a, is a great pitcher and really fun to work with, but with Donnie, we just have this poetry. Bill's told me a lot about how he is behind home plate, and uh, I'm pretty sure that he's going to back up his word. Jared Michael, we might not always agree on pitch calls, but we'll always make it to the other side. So, sure, brother. Yes, let's do this thing. Let's go. Oh, I just love love. It's so nice.
You know, I got a lot of faith in Bill. You know, I'm ready to get out there and shove. You know, go seven innings. I might even go nine innings. You know, Bill's the guy for the job. Donnie's great. He's great. And we have such a long season ahead of us, and we have many more games where we're going to be able to be, able to be the battery together. I had connections with a couple other catchers. You know, we had Danny Hosley, Eric Jones, but um, from the get-go, I knew Bill was my number one. You know, Donnie exaggerated just a little bit with the splitter, but it's still a great pitch, and he has many uh, others in his arsenal that are really good. Ready to have Bill Leroy behind the plate every inning I pitch. Um, he's the right guy for the job and uh, ready to get the job done. Yeah, I think we're both excited for to, to be out there in front of the crowd and watch this guy do his thing, man. He's been working hard and uh, just ready to throw some perfect games and maybe two or three of them. Who knows? We'll see. So we're just really excited. We can't wait to get out there and have some fun. Two or three perfect games. I mean, love can make anything possible. I knew you were the broadcaster for real when you called me Big Tiger for the first time. Okay, all right, that's, yeah, I, I, I don't know when my magic moment was for you, but I'll think about it, buddy. This is, this has really affected you. It has also affected Vincent Chapman. He's letting loose down on the field. Tanner Thomas ready to rumble. After the nod to Love is Blind, big cut and foul ball from Tanner Thomas. It'll be six, seven, eight for the animals here in the top of the second. Both teams with two runs in the first, so nobody earns a point. Now the left fielder in his third tour, all with the animals after two years of collegiate baseball with the Bananas, summers of 18 and 19. His teammate in that 2019 campaign, Gabe Howell, tumbling, makes the play in foul territory. Yeah, really nice play by Gabe Howell, ranging over towards the net there. And it is a big first out for Jared Donaldson after allowing two runs in the first inning. Gabe Howell going down to his tuchus there, coming up with the snag. And again, we've talked about just how hot Tanner Thomas has been hitting as of late. Yeah, that's a guy who came in hitting 324, a team high 390 on base percentage. Always important to keep his wheels off the bases. And now a red hot Chase Aka. Hitting 342, scolds it foul. He only has a 325 batting average. It only happens in small sample sizes, but the very rare at batting average higher than an on base percentage. 342 compared to 325 with the OBP. And that's because he hasn't drawn a ball for a sprint this year and collected two sacrifice flies last night. Correct, which do not hurt your batting average, but do hurt your OBP. His two home runs tied for the tour lead with Jake Skull. Tried to make it three right there. Got a 90 mile an hour heater, according to Trackman, and the count runs full. And Chase Acuff's got six hits in his last three ball games with five runs batted in in that span. Is that any good? Very good. Serves this one out to right center. Meadows in pursuit. Diving. Unbelievable catch by the doctor. Saves extra bases. D.R. Meadows just continued to track that ball. Looked like he was going to run the distance of a Walmart parking lot. Finally lays out and robs Chase Acuff of a huge booming double. What a snack from the doctor in right center field. Full extension. That one traveled 333 and a half feet via track man's metrics. And now a sight for sore eyes. Bronson Balholm, the catcher, in his first game since the opening weekend in Tampa. And look at that, his first banana ball hit. He's now one for four on the tour. Let's see if any of those party animals are trying to get that banana ball as well. A special moment for Bronson Balholm. And again, it's gotta feel good after coming back from an oblique injury. Yeah, injured it. In the pregame festivities before game three, he had the huge two RBI sprint in the top of the ninth inning in game two that flipped the score from three to two bananas to four to three party animals. They ended up winning that game 5-3. But Bronson, a switch hitting catcher, is a huge addition to this squad as this one to Cox, he eats it. Thought about Derek Jetering that thing across the diamond. Dustin Baber runs well, so it will be Two seeing eye singles in a row after two quick outs for Donaldson. 
And now to the 10 hole we go for the Jacksonville kid. From the south side, Jason Swan. Yeah, Dustin Baber just hit that ball in the perfect spot in the six hole there. And it was a wise decision by Ryan Cox not to throw cross body and possibly come up with some form of an error that moves the party animals further up in the scoring position. Big <laughs> cut and a miss on the 2-0. Swanee hitting 297 on this young tour after going 0 for last night. The ball's hit well, though. And Donaldson has it even at 2-2. Two two. Bauholm off second, Baber off first. Blasted into left field. It finds the grass. Bauholm scores easily from second. What a clutch piece of two out hitting from Jason Swan, who was one of the best a tour ago when runners were in scoring position. And it stayed true here in 2024. Swanee entering tonight with a 417 batting average with runners in scoring position. He just cannot be stopped. And this is why the party animals moved him into the 10 spot as well. They want a guy who can consistently get on base, get those base hits, and feed the top of the order to tack on more runs. And that's what they'll try and do with the leadoff man, Reese Hampton, due back up. Swanee with his fifth stake of the season. Splitter came in at 81, left his bat at 94, according to Trackman. And now Hampton, the switch hitting center fielder who struck out swinging his first time. Way out in front. On uh, a splitter that was bearing down and in at him. Donnie. The pitch is so nasty, he usually just throws it towards the center of the plate, and whatever happens, happens. You saw it right there, that thing dived out of the zone. It is a very tough pitch, not just to throw, but to catch. Yeah, that's why Jared Donaldson has led the world tour in wild oh. pitches in years past, as Reese Hampton just laced that ball probably to Everbank Stadium. It was tagged that much. Yeah, look out, Trevor Lawrence, headed your way. This one to Danny Hosley, over to first. No time for trickery with one run already home and two men on the bases. But Donaldson limits the damage to just one run. And it will be seven, eight, nine. Reese Alexiades, Bill Leroy, and Jackson Olson. All due to swing it. In the bottom of the second inning, they will be opposed, of course, by this guy, Garrett Delano, 60 feet and six inches away from him. Garrett, how's your evening going, buddy? Uh, it's been better. Yes. Well, the good news is the two runs are unearned. That is good, but I would have liked to win there. Yes. Completely understandable. Right, we'll forget about it. Correct. And now you've got a one-run advantage. How cool is it for you getting to pitch for the second straight year here in Jacksonville as a Callahan cool. kid? Pretty cool. I got about 30 family members right behind home plate. So they got to see all the bad words I said last inning. <laughs> Terrific. Yeah, we keep them, we keep them in the dugout. <laughs> now, now, Garrett, last inning we saw the relationship that Jared Donaldson has developed with Bill LaRoy. This is your first game catching with Bronson Valhome catching you behind the dish. How would you describe the relationship that you guys have? I'd say it's new, but we're we're getting there. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. Couple, couple shake-offs, but we're, we're, we're the most popular on the same page. All right. Well, you have the Pioneer League MVP from last year, Reese Alexiades. And that's a good start. Yep. Cutter. What's the 0-1? I'm going to throw a fastball in and I'll try to get it in. Yeah, got it in. That's good execution. I'm going to go spike on third ball. Noah Fisher. Woo! Good work, Garrett. Let's go. Good. Good, boys. That was, that was nice of you to give him the opportunity to start off the inning again. Yeah, I'm always looking out for the boys. Okay, now Bill Leroy, your teammate from 2018, just about as pesky as they come at the dish. I have seen him 
swing over one or two in his seven year career. Four pitches, four strikes. All right. 1-1. One, one. Nice. Good. That's a well-executed changeup. Well, thanks for saying that, but that was a fastball. Yeah, 87 was <laughs> would have been pretty quick for a change. Yeah. Ooh, almost hit him. Good. There was the changeup. Yeah, yeah, come on now. Wow. What's Trackman got, yes or no? Can I be mad? Let's see, Heater at 91, Trackman hit, said it got the bottom of the zone. Yeah, I, I know it did. I know it did. <laughs> Good. Get in. Get in. Get in. In. Oh, wow. Are you kidding me? Reese Hampton is out of his mind in trick plays right now. That ball looked like it was about to hit grass. Reese Hampton all of a sudden goes under so the scared. leg and saves <laughs> that one from falling in for a hit. Oh, my goodness, Reese Hampton. Gosh, take it easy, dude. <laughs> Great. Josh gosh. gets excited about these things. Yep. I'm, I'm surprised you're not screaming on the mound, Garrett. Maybe if I get a strike out here. All right, Jackson Olsen. Good. That's a one, two, three inning. Bounce it. Oh, okay. Goes between the legs. All right. We'll take that. Woo. And you're up one point to nothing. Yep, I didn't say nothing bad either. No. That's really good work, Garrett. All right, we'll check back in with you after Mace, you and the boys dance, and we'll bring Donnie into the equation, too. 10-4, see you later. All right, see you, Garrett. Maceo and the boys, take it away. Superb work from Maceo Harrison with the party animals, Jake Lealios, Jordan Hussein, Brett Helton, and Sean Fluke with the bananas, Noah Bridges, Zach Phillips, Malachi Mitchell, and Noah Nisnik. Unbelievable crew. And Jared Donaldson joins us on the broadcast. Can you hear me, brother? Oh, we got you loud and clear, Donnie. Let's go, baby. Two, three, four. Uh. And that's a great way to start your frame. How you doing, Beeks? I'm having a great night, Donnie. Can we get this in here? Ah. So Fisher with a little bouncer for a base hit his first time. Woo! Wow. Talk about getting in his kitchen and Oh, 
Oh, Sorg! Oh. A dispatching of Noah Fisher. Garrett Delano, what do you wow. think about that? I didn't Dude. watch it. I was going through a little dress rehearsal over here. I got the new, uh, the first got the new Jaguars Jiu Jitsu rash guard on, so hope it looks good. Oh, I forgot the three Jiu Crap. Donnie, was that the slider? Yeah, dude, from the side. I never thought that. We like that. Can they, Can they hear me or not? Oh, we got you loud and clear, Gary. Donnie, you got me? I got you, big guy. Come with fastball. All right, forgot he his really, dance. He was really mad he didn't get one last time. Let's see if we remember his dance. Crap. Oh, quick feet. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. I think that's it. Sound effects are awesome. Oh, oh. oh! On the paint. You should have swung. Delano, you want to call pitches here? What you, what you uh, want? Uh, yeah, I mean, Kyle's pitching us though. We're playing change up. Oh. What we got? Two one. Two one. I don't have one. I don't have one. I think he's sitting soft. Put something firm in a half. You. Goes with the split. 3 1. What's the pitch, Donnie? Come to him, Donnie. Challenge him. Come on, challenge him. Oh! Whoa! All right, now it's up to you. You gave him one. Probably gonna get split here. This baseball's kind of slick. Is slick good for you, Donnie? No. I didn't think so. It's not. I did not think so. Here we go. Yep. Uh, our boy. Merrill, boys go. Well, that was went a, firm, bro. That was a good battle. Garrett was imploring you to throw the hot stuff. Hey, he did, though. I, I respect him. He threw two of them. So, come on. Skull can't get too mad after that one. Yeah, that's pretty good. So All right. The ball down right here. Ooh. Ah. That was a heck of a pick. Yo, what was the, what was the pitch that... No disrespect. Fastball. Okay. Let's get line. <laughs> Close it, Will. Ooh! Ooh. Thank Lord. Yeah, DC's a scary one to go in on. Did, dude, get, I, did you get it in or no? Yeah, dude, DC's the worst pet of face. I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> dude doesn't check out the crap, Bill. I give you a secret to facing guys like that. Just throwing meatballs first, second pitch. Just have them on or out within three pitches. Don't let them... Uh, don't let him take your whole night up. Oh! You know, that was really nice of you, Garrett, to give that advice. Yeah, it's a, that's, a, that's a Greg Mag Maddox philosophy. On or out in three. Unless you face Barry Bonds, and just walk him. <laughs> Who's the Barry Bonds of Banana Ball? Oh, look, that's a, that's, I don't know if we have one yet. That's a tall ass. I'd say right now I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with if Reese and Skull had a little baby. <laughs> Ooh! Ah! Crack. Get moving, Skull! Get moving, Skull! Let's go! Yeah, you're up! You're up! You're up! You're up! I don't know what this celebration is, so I'm gonna sit this one out, boys. All right, just give us your commentary, Garrett. Well, that, all right, let's see. I wasn't here for this part. Uh, Oh, this is the, the, the butt drums. Oh, correct. There we go. I can't believe you're not involved in this. Yeah, and I'm, I'm so sad I missed that one. <laughs> Would you rather be the drummer or the drum? I'm going to go ahead and pass on that question. <laughs> Hi, boy. All right, Donnie. Well, the good news is you're not facing Dalton Cornette now. Yeah, I don't know how to get that to do that. Not many people Close do. Skull! Skull! Baby. We were so far behind everyone, I walked you up. That's Ooh, a beautiful purple. pitch. So far that beautiful. Outside corner. It was very disrespectful of Hosley to get me last night like that. <laughs> that was, that was messed up. <laughs> All right, what's the 2-1 pitch here to Bloomer, Donnie? He did it. Yo, did I hear you right? You said I hit 91 last inning? You did. Oh, heck yeah. You like that? Yeah. 
Maybe the Marlins will sign me. Getting into, moving. getting into Donnie's wheelhouse as far as Velo goes. That'll be a sprint for Bloomer. Well done. So Cornette well done. scores. Fourth run driven in yes. in four games yes. played for Bryson yes. Bloomer. Yes, 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 yes. Jordan Hussein will pinch run. And Tanner Thomas. Oh, he's riding his little one wheel. It's coming in from left field. It was so funny. <laughs> I would do it with my electric bicycle, but someone stole it. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. If anybody watching this lives in the Savannah area and sees a black Derwin bike, and then I'm not driving it, it's mine. <laughs> That's a scary thing to declare to the world. Yeah. He's on notice, I'm gonna find him. Oh, good take. Split almost got you there on the electric bike. Yeah, speaking of. Where's your little, where's your little fat suit at? <laughs> Good job, Bryson. Boy. Okay, Donnie, 2-1 on Tanner Thomas. You got him to foul out last time. What's the pitch here? That's good. Oh, is that slider? Or? A little splitter. Okay. I can't get the fastball away because I hit another ball for it. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just thought it was crazy. Well, um, you you got to be excited to see your guys giving you some run support here. Oh my God, he hasn't got the first yet. Oh no. Are you serious? Did the camera catch that? I was already writing single in my book. Oh, that's so messed up. He was trying to get the one wheel going. That's an asterisk. That <laughs> is an asterisk. That is an asterisk. Chase between a hot bat, huh? Yeah, he flew out deep to right center. I can't keep this in my ear. That's a good 8 3 put out for you there, Donnie. Where'd that miss, Donnie? Ask single track man. <laughs> oh, watch it! Heads up! Oh my! Hot soup! Going for Cornette. One, two to A cup. Oh yeah! Go, 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 go! Let it eat, let it eat! Oh, he's out. Oh, he's Come on! Dude, I ain't gonna lie, this Jags jersey might be doing it. I don't think you can take that thing off. Unless I give up three in the bottom here, then, yes, it, then I'm ripping yes, it off. Yes, 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 yes. Here we go, Brian A. That's the green light special at its best. Yeah, make him make a play, two outs, why not? Now Bronson Balhoe. Bounced one through the four hole. Oh, my chains are very loud in this morning. Oh, that was nasty, Donnie. Pitching angry. Bill tried. See what he goes on the 2-2 here to the Arizona State kid. Out of the stadium. <laughs> I'm running. Happy <laughs> backpack. Cold strike three. Garrett, it is your time to shine. 
Woo! It's been a while. Yeah, defense not able to make any big plays there for Donaldson. Garrett, you are going to have 10, 1, and 2. Ryan Cox, and then at the top, DR Meadows and Gabe Howell. Coxy, another one of those tough cookies. Yeah. He's yet to strike out on the tour. Do you think it happens here? I hope. I mean, nice. Wow. <laughs> that is a strong start. Good. If you're able to get Coxie right, Delano, what's the strikeout celebration you're hitting them with? Oh, it's crab right next. Crab. It's crab time. Yeah. We hit the goats. We hit the faint goats. We're going to crab. I think we're supposed to ride a Bronco. What's going on? Everybody seems confused. We're going down. Here we go. We, we, got, we still got people dancing. What's going on around here? Yo, Don, are you still there or not? How old is Rachel, Don? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I can. All right, let's see it. Cox is another one of those guys. Just got to feed him some strikes. Hope he gets out. It's not worth the effort trying to get the K, huh? Nope. Well, I will say, no disrespect to Cox, not quite the home run hitter that DC is. <laughs> he, he says that. That's a fact. Coxie still does not have a home run in his easy, illustrious yeah, banana ball yeah, career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Easy on the person. <laughs> <laughs> that is a loud cheer. Yes. Ah. What you got for a pitcher here? Right no. No. Yeah. Now, where did that miss? That must have been inside. It was in. It was in. That's a fence strike, though. Sometimes you'll get that one. Half a yellow ball off here in Minneapolis. I support that. Here we go. All of a sudden, you paint it on the outside corner. Yeah, I'll do it again. Touch low or what? Trackman says it was a pinch low. Yeah, I agree. Good, come in. Oh, Reese Hampton finally misses a trick play. That was his first failed trick play in six attempts. Good try, Reese. Yeah, he makes everything look so easy. Thanks for, thanks for thinking outside the box and going for it. What's this supposed to be? I think it's the Creed song, Take Me Higher. I mean, Creed is really, really dope. Took the Rangers to the World Series. <laughs> yep. Wow. See, that was a ball off, and Vince gave it to me. It was. I respect. is calling catcher's interference on Bronson Valholm, so there's nothing to possibly challenge here. <sighs> okay. Now, I've been telling all the fans that you're from Callahan. Do you feel like they're supporting you at least a little bit? I hope so, man. There's not that many of them, so I hope I got at least a couple. That is the very rare catcher's interference. Catcher's interference and error. Well, I can barely hear you. What was that? Curveball. 
Probably inside, but who knows. Didn't want to interrupt Donnie, but yes, catcher's interference is an error, Delano. Nice. Uh, those shorts add a few miles an hour in Velo. Say, uh, yeah. I don't think it's a good look. Well, that was a perfect swinging bun. It's the most bananas inning of all time. As was the bottom of the first. Yeah, I feel like everything's dropping today. We're finding gas. You know, that's why we have a rule out here to make the first out. But some people don't like to follow. <sighs> the guy was go. five for five. He was feeling hot. No, I, I don't have no grudge for Reese. <laughs> you struck out Dan his first time. Yeah. It's pretty rare. Pretty rare. It's a heck of a curve. <sighs> I'm breathing heavy out here. Need some cardio. Yeah. Wow. That one was dotted. Give me that lower left quadrant right there. It was dotted. Yeah. Trackman loved it. I don't even know what I want to do. I don't even know, man. Yeah. I don't think Ronnie knows what I'm throwing. It's not good. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Oh! Half ball off. It's exactly what it was. Do you go back to it here, or do you go? I don't even know, man. Kind of in a blender right now. Yeah. Man, that was a floater. I thought Sean flew 12 six out there. I'm tired. I don't think the Jags jersey is great for defense. <laughs> yeah, it only inspires offense. Which is fine. That's a ball. You struck out Hosley his first time too. Yeah. Dang it. Two-o heater. Uh, yeah, I guess. I don't like it, but I'll do it. Yeah. No way! Where are we playing that guy? Back it up a little bit. Another no unearned bunts run in this for league. you. No bunts. You are right. Playing on the grass. Strange technique for Danny Hosley. He still have two runs to play with. I guess I'll play with him. Oh, yeah. This is Jack on Someone just say step off? I heard it. <laughs> Couldn't tell you. Yes. Crosby's first at bat of the night, pinch hitting for Eric Jones Jr. What's wrong with Eric? Uh, the Bananas coaching staff had always planned on giving Crosby the second at bat here. Understood. I don't even so, know why I asked. I don't care. EJ's okay. You having a good time? Yeah. Favorite part. What's y'all's favorite part? He wanted it. What's that? Probably He's thinking about it, I Garrett. Guess, I guess we'll drop a curveball right down the middle or what? It feels right. Hope he doesn't hit a homer. Yeah! <laughs> wow. Filthy! Bless America. This might be my last one. Hey, you're, you're one strikeout away from doubling your season total here. That's exciting. Yeah, I'm excited. Can't you tell? 
Yeah. Robert Anthony Cruz. How do you attack Rack? I'm going to throw my fastball in right here. That was a good decision. Rack's got a really level swing. It's hard to beat him with pitches up. You see people try. That's why you got to throw him something low, something that sinks. Cutters and change up the two seams. I'm going to throw my cutter. I'll probably hit a fucking corner. Yeah. Tom, this is part of your two. Your table's ready. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Jared Delano, Jared Donaldson, thank you guys so much for getting mic'd up. We made it through it. We made it. There goes Delano, there goes Donaldson. The party animals claim their second point of the ball game. They lead two to nothing. And our opening act of mic'd up pitchers has come to a close. Next up on the docket, in the seventh inning, the trick pitching extraordinaire, Matt Wolf for the Bananas, and Ryan Sexy Mexi Rodriguez for the Party Animals. We'll be back in, back in action tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern. A banana Ball Sunday day game action. And then after that, to Houston for Minute Maid Park, the first ever banana ball game in a Major League Baseball stadium. That will be a week from tonight. And always important to remember, that is 7 p.m. Central time. 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. on the East Coast. Yeah, it's going to be one of those really exciting games just to see a full Minute Maid Park. And I know something that is on a lot of the bananas' minds, a lot of the party animals' minds. Who has the most trick plays in that ball game, and who possibly becomes the first banana ball player to hit a home run there as well? It's going to be thrilling. My money is on Reese Hampton. A lot of folks out there throwing their proverbial money on Jake Skull. New man on the mound for the bananas. Andy Archer taking over for Donaldson. He has 9, 10, and then the top of the order for the animals. Archer out of Milton, Georgia, up in the Marietta area around Atlanta. Induces a pop-up, foul territory. Leroy can't come up with it. Boy, you do not see that very often at all. He's as sturdy as they come behind the dish. Yeah, don't know if that was an instance where Bill Leroy lost things in the lights or whether it just was an unfortunate timing with that ball coming down there. We saw Archer and Gabe Howell all coming in there to try and make the catch, but now Archer will continue to fight here against Faber. And wow, just when you think he might get lucky and lace this one fair, it will be called foul by the third base umpire, Dustin Stetson. Yep, clearly fouled just by an inch, if that. But it was very close. Archer, a guy who spent four years pitching at Georgia Tech, finished up at the University of Hawaii. And uses one of his three fastballs for the strikeout to begin his relief appearance. And there is the signature move from Andy Archer following all of the strikeouts that he collects, just planting the arrow right off of that pitcher's mound. Four seam, two seam, and cut fastballs. His split changeup is the equalizer. As with an 0-1 count on Jason Swan. And the full capacity crowd building happy birthday. Vincent Chapman puts the icing on top of this make-believe birthday cake. The folks here in Jack's fired up about it. Swanee with an RBI single laced to left center his first time. And he's two for two. Hot shot. Howell not able to handle it. Hometown cooking for the kid out of the city on the move. 
and Jason's won in four of his last six games now for the Party Animals, has multiple hits in those games. He's really playing at an incredibly high level. And again, it's time to see if this bottom feeds the top of the order as Reese Hampton goes first pitch swinging and hits off of the net behind home plate. Vincent Chapman is able to catch that ball with his mask. Two nights in a row for him. Two, two nights in a row! Impressive stuff from our home plate umpire, showing off the athleticism, the hand-eye. Archer, from the pickoff straight to the pitch, there's the split changeup, ugly swing from the former Detroit Tigers and Arizona Diamondbacks minor leaguer. Hampton with a couple years in the Atlantic League. In between his minor league career and his professional banana ball career. Still alive after that foul ball not caught by a fan. Yeah, and we saw Archer commanding his split change and all three of those fastballs with great success against the party animals in Banana Fest last Sunday in Savannah, Georgia. Two and two-thirds innings pitch for Archer, got two strikeouts and allowed no hits to the party animals. He baffled them. Robert Anthony Cruz with a long way to run and sliding makes the catch on the edge of foul territory. He has been very impressive especially when things get hairy towards the edge of fair play. It's a DR Meadows-like development for Rack. We've seen him collect his first career trick play, but both of these guys started their career as infielders, have made the transition to the outfield, and Rack just continues to get more and more comfortable out there and really makes some dazzling plays. Andy Archer working very quickly, has already fired two balls to Noah Fisher. That ball stroke to left, Rack coming in, diving catch! Back to back, dazzling plays from Robert Anthony Cruz. Back to back, Rackson in left field from Cruz. A great diving play, and Andy Archer gets out of this inning in three minutes and 49 seconds. It's a big shutout frame for the Bananas. They trail by two points. Just need one run in the bottom of the fourth to cut the party animals lead in half. And it's Hey Baby O'Clock here for the 297th straight sold out crowd in Banana Land. Jacksonville, Florida, our fourth stop. 29 on the 2024 World Tour. This is the fourth ever game where Florida begins. The Bananas, the Michael Dean walk-off victory a year ago in the first ever ball game here in Jacks. Then in the first ever game where the Bananas were the away team, they came away victorious. Bill Lee with a scoreless inning pitch, some Bill Leroy heroics in the field behind him. And then last night, the Bananas eked out a 4-3 victory. Danny Hosley with the save. Here we go. Trying to make it a perfect four wins in four games here in Jacksonville tonight. Yeah, and we saw a one hour and 55 minute game last night. Now it does not look like we're on pace for that. We have already hit the one hour mark in this ball game. So it's worth saying that these pitchers that we're seeing for the Bananas and Party Animals are either going to need to pick it up in the minutes per inning department, or we're going to need to see this Bananas offense generate runs quickly, especially when they get shutout innings. They need to score quickly and walk off as that also speeds up these banana ball games. Yeah, Delano came into tonight 13 and two thirds innings pitched on the season, a 1.98 ERA. He's averaging just three minutes and 28 seconds per inning thrown, very quick. Only six hits. Two ball four sprints and seven strikeouts. Now tonight, Delano already has four Ks. And for the second time this evening, just like in the bottom of the second, Reese Alexiades leading it off. How about the 360 throw to first? But Baber drags Swan off the bag and Alexiades uses his speed and evasive maneuver at the end of his 90 foot sprint 
to reach on the trick play missed. It's the classic Air Baber trick play we're used to seeing. Pulls it off so well, but this time the throw just a little bit in front, dragging Jason Swan off of that first base bag. And we've seen Reese Alexiotis use his speed to his advantage. Already four stolen bases on this world tour. He was able to easily get into first base thanks to that errant throw from Baber. Yeah, those four steals in as many tries for Alexiotis, who was 29 for 32 in his attempts at stealing bases in his Pioneer League MVP campaign last summer. His four steals tied for the Bananas team lead for everybody not named Malachi Mitchell. There's a perfect eight for eight. It's Alexiotis and Oberst after flash. Bill Leroy flew into a trick play by Hampton in center his first time. Back-to-back -back innings for Delano have started with a trick play missed. It was Hampton an inning ago, Baber here in the bottom of the fourth. Look, the Bananas are still looking for their first point in this ball game. I think even with the count 0-2 here to Bill, you've got to put some pressure on these party animals and start sending Reese Alexiotis and going for a quick walk-off. Heater that Trackman had at 90, Trackman also had in the zone. Delano shakes his head. Can't believe that one. So he'll fire a one-two to Leroy, who has only struck out once on this season compared to five ball four sprints and just barely gets a piece of that one. This is the classic Bill Leroy battle. Again, this guy is such a gritty hitter at the plate. Pesky as well. And for Bill Leroy, he's just going to try and keep fouling off pitches until he gets a mistake from the pitcher. Just like Archer for the Bananas, Delano with two seam, four seam, and a cut fastball. So you never know where the heater's going to move, and you never know when he's going to break off a 75 mile an hour bender like that one that ends up pretty much right down Broadway. That's five strikeouts on the evening for Delano, who celebrates with his patented SpongeBob crab dance. And we've seen a lot of great curveballs in this ball game from Delano. It's been one of the main strikeout pitches for him. Got Crosby in the fourth inning, now it gets, or in the third inning, now it gets Bill Roy here in the fourth. He also got Hosley in the first on that curveball. Hosley and Crosby swinging, Leroy looking. Now Jackson Olsen. Bounced out into a trick play by Baber at second, his first time. This is our 11th game of the tour. Jackson started the first 10 at second base. He's the extra hitter here tonight. Batting average now dips below the Mendoza line, but he has been very clutch. And I jinxed him if I ever have. Holy moly, Delano ties him up. It's the strikeout swinging, his sixth of the ball game. And the inning will be in the fate of Ryan Cox. Yeah, it's been kind of an interesting season for Jackson Olsen, batting below 100 with the bases empty, but still posting a 290 mark, batting any time they were guys on base. Unfortunately here, just couldn't come through for the Bananas. Yeah, his three walk-offs tied with Coxie at the dish for third most on the team. They just trailed Jones and Oberst. Ryan Cox, on the other hand, has been a wizard, not just with the glove, but with the bat. Hitting 292, a 370 on base percentage. Has earned a couple ball four sprints and has yet to strike out. There goes Alexiotis, tapped to Delano. He will bounce it to first off the grass. His third trick play in as many attempts on the tour and dances off the field. Delano, a delight to watch tonight. And I'll tell you what, that is not an easy trick play as you've got to put a little more mustard on that <laughs> ball to bounce it off of the grass. Man, good instincts from Delano. Great banana ball feel. Here's Jolie Chabala for Bananas Foster. Home. To raise awareness and bring families together, we created a nonprofit called Bananas Foster. Our organization is dedicated to celebrating those in the foster care community while educating and inspiring others to get involved. Tonight, we are celebrating Lori Chapman Peacock. Lori has been a licensed foster parent for the last 21 years and has adopted nine children in her home. In total, she has welcomed 80 children and teens 
in her home. So fans, please help us celebrate Lori for making a difference right here in the Florida foster care community. Always one of the greatest moments in Banana Land, the big group hug. Lori Chapman at the center of it this time. Foster parent for over 20 years, has adopted nine children from foster care, and served as a respite care provider, accepting emergency placement so every child would have a home when entering care. In total, her family has welcomed over 80 children and teens into their home. Come on now. It is. Oh, come on that now. That is spectacular. Lori, come on now. That's what I'm talking about. That fires what? us up in Banana Land. As does a bizarre banana ball game. Our 11th of the tour. Certainly slower than most thanks to a lot of traffic on the bases. A few more trick plays missed than we're used to. And a lot of barrels. Big skull, part of that party, one for two, a single his last time. This is Andy Archer's second inning out there. Doesn't get underway yet because Brandon Crosby just hustled out of the Nanners dugout to play first, so now they have nine guys defensively. And it'll be three, four, five for the Animals. Cornette on deck, Bloomer in the hole. 2-0 on skull. Look, Andy Archer's the right guy to have on the mound in these circumstances. He worked very quickly in Banana Fest, averaging a two and a half minute, minutes per inning mark now, but has fallen behind 3-0 on Skull. He's got to be careful not pitching too fast to where he has lost his control out there on the pitcher's mound. Bizarre one there is Leroy frames the strike, then loses the ball afterwards. 3-1 cut on and missed around the top outside corner of the zone. And how about Andy Archer from 3-0 to a punch out? His second K in relief. And the second arrow now planted behind the mound. And it was an excellent sequence from Andy Archer as well, running inside there on Jake's goal and being able to get the swing and the miss there. As Cornette goes first pitch swinging and fouls that one straight back at the net behind home plate. Party Animals designated hitter with an RBI double and a two-run homer. It's up to eight runs driven in on the tour, tied for the lead with Chase Acuff and Reese Hampton. Fights that one off, fans could make a big play. Ends up getting grass in that left field foul territory berm. Another one, two. Two and two. You know, these are two big hits for Dalton Cornett. Of course, he started the tour with 15 hits in his first 31 at-bats. Was one for 12 entering tonight. But just when you think he might be able to tack on a third hit in this ball game, there's a great charging play by the Bananas infield. And Brandon Crosby has the stretch and the call at first from Bryson Wheeler. They say he's out. Fans, now coming to pitch. Cornette could have been a triple away from the cycle if he'd gotten out of the box just a hair quicker. Instead, Ryan Cox slap a star next to that 6-3 in your scorebook at home. That was a doozy of a play by the kid out of Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. And now 
Oh no! Dakota on his five foot stilts has dropped the banana ball and needs Danny Hosley to come in to retrieve it for him. Look at the numbers for stilts from a tour ago. Couple bad outings, but outside of that, very effective. I mean, before August and September, Dakota Stilts All Britain was an above average tour pitcher for the Bananas and had 39 appearances for these guys. He's certainly on track for even more here in 2024, considering he's still yet to allow a run to these party animals. So far, an inning and a third on this tour across four appearances. Deuce is wild. Bryson Bloomer rolls it over. Gonna be an error from Ryan Cox. We know he was setting up a trick play. I think that's a tough one to rule a trick play missed though. What do you think? Clearly he was setting something up. What he was setting up, we don't know. We get another look at it. I think you're right. I think you just have to defer and say that it is an error, although it does look like Ryan Cox was possibly slated to go between the legs there or pull off some other trick play to try and retire Bryson Bloomer. So now Stilts has the task of facing one of the best party animals batters, Tanner Tinder Thomas. Look at his numbers on this young tour. 136 OPS plus, that means he's been 36% better than the average banana ball hitter. One, two count on the animal's left fielder. Singled his last time. On a hop, Danny Hosley will float one over to first. Tanner Thomas beats it out. That's an E4, so errors on back-to-back -back plays for each of the banana's middle infielders. Hosley thought when that thing came down, it would beat Thomas in plenty of time, but it ended up taking Crosby off the bag. And clearly the man out of Fleming Island, Florida beat the rap. Yeah, Hosley fielded that one very well. It was almost too nonchalant of a throw to first base there. Brandon Crosby continued to wait for it, and then the ball from Hosley was not coming down. Crosby had to leap up and get that one. But Chase Acuff will fly out here to DR Meadows in center field. So despite some faulty defense for the Bananas, Stilts gets out of a jam. No harm, no foul. We are halfway through our banana ball game. Let's get some of the sights and scenes from our evening thus far. Dalton Cornett, first inning, first bomb of the tour, two run shot. And there was no doubt about it. He got to watch his handiwork. The Pippa Passes Kentucky native with the two run blast. And then how about DR Meadows? Full extension, unbelievable play, robbing Chase Acuff of extra bases. But Jason Swan in his home city, driving in Bronson Bow home with the base knock. That was a part of a three run third inning. Check that. That was part of a one run second inning. Now we're looking at the three run third. Tanner Thomas with the RBI single, <laughs> eventually. He actually ends up being out at first because of his odd trip down the base paths on his one wheel. And Robert Anthony Cruz, two incredible diving catches to give Andy Archer a scoreless fourth inning of work. Now Garrett Delano out for his fifth frame on the bump. Doesn't understand where Vincent Chapman says that one missed. Trackman had it scraping the bottom of the zone. But a borderline pitch. And now 2-0 on the man at the top of the order for the Nanners who has reached on an error and catcher's interference, which also goes as an error in the book. Yeah, again, we've seen a lot of unusual defense in this ball game. Now, we've seen the good plays from DR Meadows and Rack, but overall, we've seen a lot of errors from both the party animals and bananas alike, and only three trick plays so far in this game as well, as DR Meadows takes a 2-1 pitch, drives it into left field, and that is now 19 hits for DR Meadows. He is one away from becoming the first player in banana ball this season to reach 20. 
He scored one of the two runs for the Nanners in the first. Here's the man who scored the other. Kept the inning tied at two runs apiece, so neither team scored a point. But then the party animals won the second and the third. They still lead 2-0 in that all-important points category. Howell with the single his last time after he was plunked in the first inning. Driven deep but foul down the right field line. Fans do not catch it. We're still looking for our first foul ball caught by a fan in this three game set here in River City. One coming to Howell. Chopped through the six hole. Former Atlanta Braves minor leaguer with his second hit in as many trips to the dish. Meadows up to second base. And now Dan Oberst. One of Delano's best friends, his sparring partner in jujitsu. 0 for 2 with two strikeouts swinging. Full capacity crowd here in Jacksonville. Boogieing in the stands, hoping that the vibes can rub off on the man out of Largo, Florida. And this feels reminiscent of the Bananas rally from a night ago in the first inning. Meadows and Howell reaching with singles, and then Dan Oberst ending it with a walk-off double. And of course, he is leading the tour with six walk-offs to this point. We'll see if he can get the better of Delano with this third at bat and extend that lead in the walk-off department. Trackman had that last foul ball leaving Dan's bat at 98 miles an hour and had that fastball from Delano on the outside corner coming in at 89. Big 0-2 pitch. Get one and two. Delano first came to Banana Land in 2018 as a collegiate banana when he was an Ivy League man at Brown University, then finished up his collegiate career at Mercer. A finalist for the John Olerud Two-Way Player of the Year. Same year Danny Hosley was. Delano wanted that one. Just a pinch down and out. Trackman reaffirms Vincent Chapman's call. 2-2. Wow. That one just a pinch inside. Excellent eye by Dan, but these are dangerous takes. Yeah, this could be a big payoff pitch from Garrett Delano. It could also be a big first point for the Bananas and big for this banana ball game in general as this walk-off would get the game moving a little bit quicker. And there it is, the third ball four sprint of the season for Dan Obers. The first point of the night for the Bananas and Obers with seven walk-offs on the tour. Delano barking at Chapman as he walks off the field. A couple singles in a sprint, and a couple very close calls do not go Garrett's way. So we have a 2-1 ball game. Banana's first point of the ball game. Here is Zach Phillips, former Kansas City Royals minor leaguer, and switch hitting catcher Bronson Balholm with the gear freshly ripped off him by his teammates on the pit crew switch up is now two for three on the ball game. Couple bouncers to the right side. Mother Nature has called this a curveball at us. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. To a okay, here's the young professor. We've had lightning. Yeah, that's a fact. Okay, terrific. Before we give away a free pair of shoes, thanks to our dear friends over at Zappos, we do have a highlight of how the party animals came away two to one victors in the all important points category this evening. So control room folks in Grayson Stadium, give us the highlight, yes! Show it to us! Split fired up, the animals coming in with their pyrotechnics. And how about Dalton Cornett with two outs and a man aboard, absolutely destroys it, drives it, Noah Fisher and himself and we dance on further into the night. And what's crazy, you saw the party animals waving that one goodbye as it left the bat of Dalton Cornett, and then DR Meadows with a phenomenal 
diving catch to rob chase a cup of extra bases but the party animals would continue to tack on some runs we saw one in the top of the second yeah that's the rbi single from jason swan that put the inning winning run across in the second now we are in the top of the third we had a mic on jared donaldson and it felt bad because the party animals brought the absolute bats out barrels all over the place they score three they win the inning on a little trick play action from Dustin Baber. And how about rack and left field? Couple spectacular plays. Again, this guy is continuing to grow as a banana ball player. I am so excited to see what he's going to bring out there consistently, night in and night out in left field. He's only gonna get better defensively and he's only gonna have more trick plays like this one from Ryan Cox at shortstop. Yeah, phenomenal one. Coming in, charging. How about that for a trick play? Vincent Chapman gets the ricochet. Of course, no trick rewarded to Cox. Just an amazing baseball play attacking that. He couldn't, there's no amount of money that could ever possibly get that guy to have a trick play on Cornette, busting it down the line. That thing was bang, bang. Yeah, and overall, we saw a really fun game for the five innings that we got. Yeah. And we saw the party animals who were able to successfully get the hits. We saw this team was lagging a little bit offensively over the course of the last couple of games. It was it was one of the big problems was party animals not able to score early in ball games. And then we saw party animals relievers were falling apart at the end of ball games as well. But the party animals came out early. You got the big blast from Dalton Cornett and they just kept it rolling across multiple innings. And again, we saw the bottom of this order. Jason Swan, Chase Acuff, Dustin Baber, Bronson Balhome, they combined for six hits all together, and they were a big reason that the party animals rolled tonight, mostly against Jared Donaldson. And remember, this is an official party animals victory, bringing them to five and six on this tour. That ends the five-game winning streak for the Bananas because we got past the one-hour mark on the two-hour timer, and we also got five innings in the book. I either of those things make it an official game. They check both boxes, so extra secure win there if it, it doesn't it doesn't count double but you know yeah and if anything it, it makes tomorrow's game more exciting as well now yep. you've got a rubber match we saw the intensity between the bananas and party animals when they were playing a rubber match in peoria a couple of weekends ago now we're going to get it again and it looks like we're probably going to get ethan scooge going for the savannah bananas and he'll be opposed by brett helton of the party animals phenomenal pitching matchup yes that is two really incredibly talented banana ball pitchers that will be first pitch 1 p.m eastern tomorrow a little sunday day game banana ball action before we bid you adieu this evening and say hello to you tomorrow afternoon we do have a pair of shoes to give away courtesy of zappos before our winner drum roll pepper <laughs> Cassidy Riney, Cassidy Riney, congratulations. Thank you to everybody who entered in and got a chance at that free pair of shoes. We'll be giving away another pair tomorrow afternoon. Okay, for the crew that made this broadcast possible, shout out Emerson Elmgren, currently hauling her tripod away from the first base camera, the Iron Horse of BTV on third base, Lex. Check that. I was just going absolutely you auto defaulted. mode. I defaulted to the last four games where Lex Fowler was at third base. Lex was on high home tonight. Great work, Lex, there. On third base, Katie Richmond. Good job across the diamond from Emerson for Katie Richmond. On the center field camera, it was Taylor Cordona. Taylor, that's what I'm talking about. On the wireless, Clayton Franklin. Clay Pimp, you know him, you love him. On high first, Jeff Haynes once again. That guy is terrific. On the utility, Mike and guys up. Helping get Drew Gillespie up here doing a lion's share of work. Nick Keldy, DJ Squints. When it comes to our folks in Savannah, in the control room, you have our director, Chad Reese, the Reesiest of all Chads, the technical director, Arch Pingle. I saw you try and get me. You tried to Ron Burgundy me. I know it's not Pongle. It's, it's Arch Pingle. Great work, Arch. On the replay, Kwanzi, one name. You know him, and you certainly love him. On the audio, Dakota Burns said. Yeah, Dakota, on the ones and the twos. Great to have you back in BTV world. On the score bug, Michael Basista. That guy dominates that thing. And son of a gun. These two cats are dominating <laughs> graphics once again. It's Julia Massey, and on the statistics being updated on said graphics, Mikey O'Connor. Who else, Josh? 
Who else would it be? I mean, he's a pro. He's a yeah. pro. Um, of course, we shout out our play-by-play -play broadcaster oh. tonight. Great work. Uh, you know, congratulations yeah. in the chats for him. Shout out. shout out Binko Scala. Thank you. Thank you <laughs> very much, Josh Tavelski. Uh, oh. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Uh, thank you so much, Kylie Sadamka, our coordinating producer right here. Boy, oh boy, is she a rising star in BTV. Thank you to Garrett Delano and Jared Donaldson for getting mic'd up tonight. An immense thank you to Drew Gillespie for popping up into the booth with us. And by the way, Kwanzi on replay. I think I might have said Kwanzi on audio. I think I said Kwanzi on audio. Thank you, Kylie, the voice in my head, for making sure Kwanzi was replaying. We can't have two people on audio. Kwanzi, one name, you know him. Yep, you love there him. There it is. He's on the replay. He wasn't doing audio. That was Dakota <laughs> Burnson. That was Dakota. Dakota's on the audio. It's okay. It's Kwanzi's okay. Hey, on the you're replay. Good, you're good. You're good. If you just would read it <laughs> instead of trying to just go off your brain. Your hey. brain's not going to get it right all the time. Breathe. You can read it. But then it says Arch Pongle. Breathe. 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 They're trying to trick breathe. me if I read Hey, breathe. We've got a game tomorrow. Let's thank, be happy. Thank you so much for spending your Saturday night with us. Thank you, Josh Tolevsky, for your terrific color commentary. Thank you to our executive producers of BTV, Emily, Jesse, and Carrie Cole, as well as Jared Orton. For our entire cast and crew, I am Biko Scala saying so long. Remember, first pitch, 1 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. Jacksonville is on the line. The Nanners trying to get back in the wind department. Until we see you then, we'll, we'll see you later! later!